Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Janina Jeff, Staff Bioinformatics Scientist here at Illumina. And today I have the pleasure of speaking with H. Puentes. Hello, hi everyone. Uh, my name is H. Puentes. I am the President and CEO of San Diego Squared. San Diego Squared. First of all, I really like the the um, the emblem or the the what is it? My like the for? logo. The logo. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, mostly because my my logo is similar. My name is Janina Jeff, and I go by DJ Squared, which is Doctor Janina Jeff. So squared. <laughs> yeah, that's it's interesting. That's how the name came. Kind of similar too. Okay. Um, so um, Bill Rastetter, my co-founder of San Diego Squared and really the founder, um, he initially wanted the name to be San Diego STEM Diversity. Mm. And then through like a series of emails, he was like, SDSD, or if we want to be accurate in STEM, he said SD2, San Diego Squared. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about how, what San Diego Squared is and how did you wind up at the Illumina Genomics Forum? Yeah. Um, San Diego Squared, we, we're on a mission to change the face of our STEM driven companies. We ultimately are building a network that goes local to high schools and colleges, identifies incredible students that just so happen to be diverse. And then we connect them to STEM driven companies and opportunities within those companies like internships, job shadows, mentorship, um, site visits, those sorts of things. Um, and in that we have, so, we have always had a really great connection with Illumina. You know, what's been special with Illumina is that they've been an organization that have gotten behind us since the very beginning with a long-term lens, right? And so I think they're looking for us to really build that diverse talent pipeline into their companies and into the communities um, that should have been involved in a long time ago. So, um, and so through that work, um, we've got several students that are interested uh, in, in you know, we've got a student that's interested in the technology side of what Illumina does. Yeah. Right. So how do they build the sequencing machine that they just launched the other day? Like there's a lot of coding and a lot of engineering that goes to that. Um, we've got students that are interested in medicine and, and, and becoming doctors. And so um, Illumina was very gracious to offer our students uh, some tickets um, free at cost. Uh, and so they've been here having the most amazing time. Yeah, we got so a chance much. to speak with yeah, some of them. They're, they're, they're are, great. They are oh, incredible. My goodness. Uh, I, I think to myself, like, when I was their age, I wasn't doing what they're doing. I didn't know yeah. what a sequencer was, yeah. let alone did I go to a conference where I get to meet a president. Like, that's right. You're right. <laughs> crazy. And, it, and, it, and I think that's the most beautiful part about our partnership with Illumina and the Illumina Corporate Foundation is we like to say at SD2 that, you know, this work it's really only like 30% financial. Mm. The other 70% is when you really connect these students through human connections. Mm. And I think what, what, what really just inspires me about working with Illumina and the team at Illumina and the people at Illumina is just like that real authentic connection and that commitment to really connect in a human way with our students. And at the end of the day, if we're really gonna move the needle and if we lo really look at what's been missing in this space, it's that human connection. And I think, uh, I think it's just a beautiful thing to see at this conference. Well, how many students do you guys have? How did you pick them? But most importantly, tell me about some of the reactions the students had when they knew they were coming. Yeah, so we are working with 46 high school students that each of of them have been paired with a mentor for over for a year. Um, each of our um, fellows are high school students, sophomore, junior, seniors. Uh, they enter the program. It's a rotation-based program, and it's really the beginning of our scouting, right? Similar to a professional sports team. It's like they go into high schools and they find those players that have show incredible excellence. They show real commitment to the sport. Then they go talk to their parents and they're like, hey, your daughter really has something here, right? And then they help them figure out how to get the best equipment and get the training and get the tutor and really give them the best opportunity to land that dream role in professional sports. We take that similar model and apply it to diverse talent into STEM. You know, the students that we chose, um, we're, we've been running programs for a year. So we started out with four high school students, then we moved to 12. We just accepted 28 in our latest cohort. Wow. Um, and so it was pretty easy to select at the beginning. Um, now we're getting to be a family of 70, 
with 70 mentors meeting once a month for an entire year. Uh, it's pretty amazing the work that's been happening and you know the excitement of the students. Uh, I think a big highlight, Obama, is a pretty special moment. I, I have the picture of them smiling just before. Oh, did before. they get a picture? No, not with Obama, but just before he came on. Oh, wow. To see them look so excited to be there and we got a great seat. So yeah, it's wonderful. Um, first of all, this work is just, Breathtaking. Like, seriously, I, I mean, I do a lot of work in this space um, and I have never heard. I mean, there's so many STEM initiatives and I've been involved in a lot. I've never heard someone talk about some of the things that you talked about. Um, one of them, some key takeaways is that giving money is only 30 percent. 70 percent is a human connection. Um, social capital. I had never thought about that, but you're exactly right. The thing I go back and forth on is, you know, should we be teaching the students how to build social capital or should we be teaching folks who have social capital to realize, to humanize yep. really the experience, right? Like should, should we even have to build social capital? But either way, I don't think the onus is on us to decide that, right? Because we didn't create this paradigm. So um, one of the things that I think is really cool though, having the students here, they are able to have kitchen co kitchen table conversations with CEOs, with yep. scientists, and start to build that network. And so I think that's extremely important. I can comment a little bit on the, should we have to build social capital? Yeah. And I think there's an answer to that. But I think before that, I I come from a sort of, a real I, what I consider a realist perspective on diversity and inclusion. And, and that fundamentally means that I actually don't think that it's always or a majority of the time nefarious why diverse communities are not included okay right? i think i think it started potentially started that way yeah with some some racism that was sort of more prevalent in historically but i think now the problem has gotten much more systemic right and i think and i think when i think about designing solutions for diversity and inclusion this is my second sort of diversity inclusion project and i think it's really important to design programming that kind of fits and, and, and meets the systemic problems. And, and so what I mean by that is companies aren't actually built to do community work. Mm. They, they, it, they're built to sell sequencers. Yeah. They're built to sell software. Yeah. They're not built to tap deep into community. It's, it, it's not in their very nature how, how they're built, right? Uh, and so I think what we're trying to do at San Diego Squared is create programs that efficiently and effectively help companies connect to community in real meaningful ways, right? Because I think talking to CEOs, I see it every day, they want to make change, but they don't know how to when they're getting pressure, right? To make their 10K filing, make their revenue, make their return on investment for everyone, right? And that's important and they should focus on those things. And that's where I think having programs that understand that element, that mm. understand that this is, is not so much is nefarious, I think, I think, as people consider, it's actually a systemic thing. And if you design programs to address that, you're gonna be much more effective. Now, to your question about um, um, should, we, uh, should people have to do social capital, tie it to that, I think there's a nature of connection, right? It's sort of in how we, Grew up from like uh, you know hunter gatherers it's to like human farmers. Experience, yeah, 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 right. right? It's like, I, I just think like it's just the way it is, you know, because there was like wolves out there and, and bears and stuff, you know. So we got to ride together, right? And if, if we're together and we look together, then then that's gonna kind of be it. But I think it's not a or question. You're designing a program that addresses both, right? Which is, on one side, um, you know helping students get their social capital because at the end of the day, they, it's really, really critical, right? For it's a number critical. of different reasons. Yeah. To, from a career standpoint, from a de professional development standpoint. Personal standpoint. From a personal, exactly. Yeah. Um, but I also think that in this, in, in having the students connect with these executives, something's happening on the executive side. Something's happening on the scientist side, right? Because what they're seeing is that there's incredible excellence out there. Right, I think when you spoke to Evelyn, right, like the excellence just emanates from her, oh, gosh, right, yes. and so therefore it starts to change your culture and your thought about how you view these incredibly talented people, and I think you know, kind of the the, the last thing I'll say on this is is, you know, um, if you believe, I believe that no community has a monopoly on incredible talent, mm -hmm. right.
And that's what San Diego Squared is showing. These students are excellence before us. We're doing nothing to them. Yeah. We're just creating an opportunity, a platform, a network, a family for that excellence to be seen. SD Squared, where are you five to 10 years from now? Oh, un unfortunately, the lack of diversity in STEM is not just isolated in San Diego. Right? It's not like <laughs> as soon as you land on the flight, it's like only here, we're not diverse, right? Uh, and so I think, you know, our vision has always been to build a model where we connect academia, industry to community, where we can efficiently and effectively through a network tap in, identify incredible talent, really build relationships at some of the most innovative companies in San Diego, find what opportunities they have, connect the two, and really build that talent pipeline. So we're really, you know, having some incredible talent come into our STEM companies. The idea is that then we move to another city. So we've got Bay Squared, then Atlanta Squared, then Boston Squared, okay. right? And so then you start to connect talent in these different communities because Illumina has presence in multiple cities, right? And so if we're able to do it and find a, a real model that works, then we can, we can scale that out and take that to different cities. So I think in five years, I think we're at least thriving in two cities. Okay. Um, and a- Do we get to all vote on what city it is? Uh, can you know, I, I'm a, a, I'm a, can I do some nominations? Yeah, 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 you, know? yeah, you can, you can. I'm sure there's probably some research to be done. Uh, okay, I, I mean, I'm assuming you mean out of California, but maybe not. I, I mean anywhere. I mean, in okay. the U.S., right? Anywhere that makes sense, you know? I have to tell you, though. Yeah. I asked Evelyn this question. All right. And I said, Evelyn, where do you see yourself in five years? And she gave me an answer that completely blew me away. What'd she say? She said, I'm going to be on the stage at this conference. And I mean, we were all just like, like <gasps> And she did it probably like with no hesitation. No hesitation. And mm. of course she had second and third answers too, but yeah. I mean, that one just took me by surprise. Yeah. Yeah. Ultimately, these, these students are everything. They are. I'm so inspired today by our conversation and the work that you're doing. And I'm so excited that Illumina was a part of it. Yeah, we, we are doing some incredible things. I, like, like I said, from, from Bill, the board, our partners, our founding partners like Lumina, Nurk, and Tracon. I mean, there's just so many people that have stepped up to the plate to really invest. These students that ultimately, they're the stars that have been putting in all that work. We're very fortunate, fortunate to do this work. It's like, I've got the best job on the planet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> thank yeah. you so thank much. You so this much is great. This is great.